The Miami Heat's playoff hopes are on the line, so despite feeling a little under the weather tonight, Dwayne Wade is set to give it a go in Cleveland against his old pal, LeBron James, and the Cavaliers. With seven games left on the schedule, the King and the Cavs are set to lock down the two seed in the East sooner rather than later, which could mean a first round series against the Heat. A potential preview tonight on TNT. It's NBA tip-off presented by Auto Trader ahead of another doubleheader tonight here on TNT. Welcome in everybody to our Atlanta studio. I'm Matt Weiner in for Ernie Johnson once again as he gets set for the Final Four in Indianapolis. Uh, the LA Lakers are not one of the four teams on our air tonight, but they are exceptionally well represented here in Studio J. Shaq right there, Rick Fox right over there. Yes. I thought that was just for Isaiah. No, that's going to be a thing for Rick now, too. And Brian Shaw here, our special guest, in the studio tonight as well. You want to know why I'm clapping? Why? Because, you know, I'm quick to say I got four rings, but if it wasn't for these two fellas right here, I probably wouldn't have one. So thank you, fellas, oh, for man. helping me get three in a row. Thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> it started, it started, it started away. with you. Nope, it started with you looking for me. I appreciate these guys more than you know. Big part of the three-peat Lakers under Phil Jackson at the start of the millennium. You guys played 309 games together, regular season and post game. You won, wait, you won 232 of those. That's about 75% hey, by my record. Here's what I want to know, since it's all Lakers here. Is there some sort of pregame ritual we have to do to get ready for the night? Yeah, but you're not involved. That's fine. You guys do what you need to do. <laughs> no, and, we, and we can't show you because it's not PG-13. <laughs> okay. We, 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 yeah. we can't show you. And you see Rick trying to reach for my head. Yeah. I, I, rub, I, I had to remind him. I had to remind him. You know, in the <laughs> locker room. Rub the trophy. <laughs> That you remember, we measured our heads. On yeah, the we did. I was the fourth biggest head on the team. Who was the first? You. No. <laughs> you. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> you, AC Green, that's Derek right. Fisher, yeah. Rick Fox, then myself. Well, that's actually, actually I was, I was fifth. fifth. I was fifth. That's I was fifth. fifth. I was fifth. Uh, as for tonight, we've got the Heat and the Cavaliers. Could wind up being a playoff matchup. And in the meantime, Cleveland looks like a pretty solid number two seed right now. The calendar has turned to April, so we're late in the season, but not quite to the postseason. So we're kind of looking for topics of conversation. It came up yesterday that LeBron James has been allowed freedom by head coach David Blatt to call a ton of plays on the fly. In your experience as a coach and as a, as a guy with the ball in his hands, how big a deal is this? How unusual is that? No big deal at all. I think it's natural for the, the best ball handler, usually the point guard, and LeBron plays a lot of point out there when, when he's on the floor, to, uh, to, to have a feel. And the coach has uh, faith in him, obviously, and so he allows him to call, make calls. I don't think it's a big deal at all. Yeah, I don't think it's a big deal. I mean, it acknowledges that it wasn't something he was prepared for his first year, but as he moved forward, it was something he did in Miami and Cleveland when he was first started there. And back again. Uh, He's been doing everything. He's had his imprint on this season uh, with his opinion in terms of management moves and player additions. Uh, I just wonder if he's eventually going to start writing checks for everybody. <laughs> he can he's, afford that. He's got enough. He can <laughs> he if he could. wants to. You played for a, a bunch of coaches over the years. How many of them gave their point guard or whoever was handling the ball that kind of freedom? Well, you know, most of my uh, point guards that I play with, including B. Shaw, are very, very intelligent in the game. So the coach said, B. Shaw, you handle it. And, you know, LeBron is a similar type player. Now, in the case of Rondo, Rondo is the type of guy who needs that confirmation, say, you call the place. Guys like Rondo, you can't really control. So, you know, these guys are saying it's not a big deal. And in LeBron's case, it's not a big deal. But some players don't like to look at the coach every time. You know, some coaches, I mean, some players like to go out and just do what they do. But for LeBron, I think it's a great thing. It just shows that the coaches and the players have the ultimate trust, and it should help them in the long run. Hey, seven games left for the Cavaliers on the schedule now. They're three games up on both Toronto and Chicago in the Eastern Conference. What would you like to see from them here over the next week and a half, two weeks? Well, right now they're playing, they're playing pretty good basketball. And, you know, LeBron is, you know, playoff ready, and he's going to be having conversation with the guys to get them ready. You know, they're just going to be playing loose. It looks like they have the second seed locked up, so they're not going to be doing too much. They don't want to get any guys foolish injuries going into the players, but they're going to be a scary team and they're going to be ready. And, you know, they're the type that they can win on the road, they can win at home, so it doesn't really matter who they play, but 
I think they're coming out of the East. That guy, by the way, will play tonight. We're told Kyrie Irving's not feeling well, but does plan to play. Kevin Love, on the other hand, who's been dealing with a back injury for a good chunk of the season now, is out for the Cavaliers. They face a Miami team that begins the night seventh in the East by virtue of a tiebreaker with the Brooklyn Nets, and they're just a half game up on the charging Boston Celtics. They've won two out of three against the Cavaliers this season, but both of those were in South Florida. They got blown out in Cleveland without Dwayne Wade back on February 11th. And Wade, as I mentioned, is playing tonight, but he's almost a day-to-day -day situation there because of the need and tonight because of an illness. Uh, what is that conversation like with Eric Spolstra and D. Wade on a nightly basis at this point in the season when they can't afford to drop any games? Well, I think the main thing is uh, they want him to be healthy. It, does, it, it doesn't matter if they win games and then he gets hurt going into the playoffs. So he wants to stay healthy, feel strong. Um, obviously, they want to keep on fighting for that, for that position. And I don't think that they fear Cleveland or um, Atlanta if they get the seventh or eighth spot going into the playoffs. Yeah, they're defending. Uh, they're champions. There's enough players on that team that understand how to maneuver at this time of year. And uh, I'm sure they'd like to see Cleveland, if I had to guess. I mean, they've had success, two and one. Stop it. I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, they, they can't, I don't think they fear them. They respect them. Stop but they would, they, would, they would like to see a team that they've had success against. That's what we were like. Come on now. Oh, yeah. Certain teams, like, like to for, there were certain teams we didn't fear. Didn't fear, like to see. Well, there's, there's things that, you know, obviously D. Wade knows about LeBron, his strengths and weaknesses from playing against him in practice every yeah. day. And so that's something that he can use to his advantage if they do face each Plus other. Plus that whole headband thing. He's probably got the inside, <laughs> you know. There it is. Turn a lot of that. <laughs> Don't you say it, <laughs> I know you. Uh, final Four Saturday coming up, 3 to 4 Eastern time at the Final Four presented by Infinity and hosted by Dennis Miller featuring a special appearance Rock by The, the Rock. <laughs> it's the, the first and only time Charles Barkley will ever appear on a marquee with Dennis Miller and The Rock. He's right? moving up, though. We saw him with Spike and... Series Samuel Jackson. Right. Final Four weekend. Watch the traditional Watch telecast on CBS or for coverage geared toward your team, tune into TNT or True TV for Team Stream presented by Bleacher Report. So, middle of the road, traditional broadcast, TBS, the biased Homer coverage on TNT and True TV. Serves hey, that's Entertainer. Entertainer. That's how you laugh when you know you're clean, man. <laughs> 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 yeah, Sam, I see you with the fouls on. Coming up. Hey, log on to NBA.com slash drive and register to play the Auto Trader Drive to the Finals fantasy game for your chance to win 25 grand toward the purchase of a new car listed on autotrader.com. And earlier tonight, LeBron James arrived to the arena in his Kia K900 luxury sedan, the official luxury vehicle of the NBA. LeBron approached Kia last year for a firsthand experience with the brand's flagship sedan and was a big fan before becoming a partner. The K900 is aimed at confident, independent thinkers who seek out new products and unique ideas. As Key's official luxury ambassador, LeBron stars in ads for the K900. Stay tuned for a look at this campaign called Fit for a King. Looking for one to be delivered to my house any day.